Yes, sir. Reading you loud and clear. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, a lot of discussion has been the speed of which we're returning to space and why it seems like a quite a long period of time. But just to bring back history for you, it took this long when they were uh, testing the pad abort systems on the original Mercury capsules, the first ones that took Americans to space. And of course, Alan Shepard. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. Yes, sir, reading you loud and clear. Everyone knows about the space race and how quickly the flights were taking place, but a lot of people don't realize that the pad abort test for the Mercury capsule was a full two years before Alan Shepard and then a little bit later Gus Grissom got inside those capsules. And the first pad abort test for the Mercury capsule, the first one was just a boilerplate capsule with no instrumentation in 1959. And then shortly thereafter, they had just a handful of experiments for vibration, air pressure, and things of that nature while they were testing their pad abort systems, which essentially was solid rocket boosters on top of the capsule. The Super Draco, so much more advanced than this. A very highly evolved system with the liquid fueled boosters that one day will land that capsule and a pinpoint pad landing in the future. Something to look forward to. Now that won't take place in the first manned flights when SpaceX take, takes its first astronauts up to the space station. It'll be, uh, the, they will learn, land with a parachute out in the Atlantic Ocean. The heavens have always presented a challenge to man. Many secrets remain locked in space, secrets that have puzzled men for centuries. The search for knowledge about space is underway. Hundreds of scientific rockets and satellites have been launched. As the information is collected from space, it is made available to people all over the world. Already, startling and practical advances in many scientific fields have resulted. For Dragon, the loads are different than for fairing, so you actually you actually don't lose any performance. It's actually uh, it's right on the money for that what you would have for um, pure satellite missions, anyways. So um, it, it worked out well. We have the right safety factors in there, and uh, and we we now in the process um, towards certifying both vehicles for manned space flight. particular test, um, we, uh, um, to, to me, you want to show that you can move the astronauts away from wherever the problem is yeah, and land them safely. That, that to me, that demonstration is really um, the, the, one of the key parts together with, with gathering data that can improve the vehicle or show we did a perfect job. Um,
Shoots have just collapsed because the capsule has successfully landed in the Atlantic Ocean. That test went off right on schedule. It was quite a sight, and there was actually a sound wave that came across the causeway just as it went off. We weren't even expecting that, but those Super Draco motors are very powerful. Powerful enough one day to land that capsule on a pinpoint landing spot over there on pad 13, where one day SpaceX hopes to land both their boosters and their capsules right down the road. What an amazing, amazing experience to see parachutes unfurl and take it down to the Earth's surface for well, the Atlantic. The recover vehicles are on the way, but it's very clear that this is a very successful test. All systems were go on the countdowns, no anomalies, they were ready for this. Good job, SpaceX. From U.S. Launch Report, Veteran Space Report, Randy Coppola. Thanks for watching.